I'm back with six cool tech products for your setup, this time for under $100. Check out the links in the description for up-to-date pricing. I'm not a streamer, so you may be thinking, what are you going to do with a stream deck? But believe it or not, the Elgato Stream Deck is the product I personally was the most excited to test out. Now I care about productivity, and I like to have fun tech products around my desk, so this checks both of those boxes. The deck plugs into your computer with USB, then is set up with the Elgato desktop app. The build quality is very good, but not necessarily premium. As much as I like the tactile feel of pushing a real button, the buttons feel a bit mushy to me. They remind me a little of pushing a shutter release on a high-end camera, where you half press for focus and then full press to release. Getting into the desktop app, I started off by setting up some simple functions like volume up and down, and then a media start button. It's not difficult to click and change these settings on your computer, but the quick push of a button is even more fast and satisfying. A couple more advanced functions I set up were opening my Lightroom app when I needed to upload and edit images. I also set up a button that acts as a quick key for when I need to start a new audio recording file. There's lots of ways you can personalize your setup, including downloading icon packs and themes. I've only gotten started exploring all the cool things this deck can do. Let me know in the comments if you have suggestions. In my January tech accessories video, I featured a pocket size LED light. These can be used for a wide range of uses, video calls, product shots, or just setting the mood in your space. I highly recommended the Loom Cube with its low price of $50. The question is, does the Aperture Light offer enough extra value to be worth $40 more? So let's start off with the basics on the aperture. I love the snappy on and off switch. I'll always take a switch over a button you have to hold down. The only other physical control is a clickable wheel. The light features charging or power delivery via USB-C. It also gives you a threaded tripod mount on the bottom surface, and also magnets to give you an additional mounting option. In the CCT mode, you can adjust the brightness and color temperature with the wheel. The max brightness is very similar, if not a little less bright compared to the Loom Cube. The included diffuser helps to make the light less harsh and give everything a softer look. Personally, I would always keep this attached to the light unless you really needed maximum brightness or you wanted a harsher light source. Where the aperture takes lighting to the next level is the HSI mode, where you can run through a wide gamut of colors. Aperture also has an app called Sidious Link, where you can coordinate several lights together. You can also create scenes and set up special lighting effects. If you need color and see the value in the app, then that Aperture Light is definitely worth the money. Up next is the Orbit Key Desk Mat. Desk mats have become an essential desk accessory for me, especially with a real hardwood top. A mat not only protects your surface, but it also gives you a nice consistent texture for mouse movement. It's easy to find PU desk pads for $8 to $10 on Amazon. So is the Orbit Key mat worth 10 times that price? One differentiator is that the Orbit Key mat gives you a document hideaway feature. This two-layered approach gives you a place to stash important documents that you want to keep close by, but not visible. Another organization helper is the magnetic cable holder to guide loose cables to a specific location. This is perfect for charging cables or possibly a keyboard cable. The mat fared well in all my typical tests, starting off with the spill test, the writing test, my impact or imprint test, and finally mouse slide. Although the test results are basically the same as the $8 desk pads, what's hard to see from these tests is the better material quality. The top layer is firm with a very fine grain. Unfortunately, the color options are limited with only stone or black options, unless you upgrade to their Star Wars variants. For $80, my expectations are very high, and there are some big problems. The biggest one here is that the mat does not lay flat. I followed all of the Orbit Key's specific instructions, and when that didn't work, I placed over 100 pounds on the mat. But I'm convinced that my mat will never flatten out. Amazon reviews back this up, as many buyers have the same complaint. In the end, an $8 desk pad may be just as good for most people with less problems. The Govi Lyra is a product we've been using for a while, mostly to make the background of our videos look cool. The question isn't so much do I like it, it's do I recommend it now that it's dropped down to $100. Looking first at the quality of the lamp, it does look and feel worthy of its price tag. 
Govi includes a remote, which acts great as an alternative to using a device. The remote is especially nice anytime you walk into the room without your phone, or maybe someone else wants to use the lamp. The matte aluminum finish comes in silver only, which is a little unfortunate if you have an all black or white look in your office. We found the best way to use this lamp is to direct the light into a wall or a corner. This way the glow will bounce off and fill the area. Going into the Govi app, there's tons of options with a massive range of colors, brightness range, and 64 scene modes. The majority of the time, I really just use warm white or solid colors. This may seem like it's not taking advantage of all the features available, but being able to fine tune the lights to the exact color temperature or the color I want is a different way of utilizing its capabilities. One fun feature is using the different music modes where the lights can respond to the music. These modes can feel a bit over the top and flashy for me, but I can see some situations where they could be cool. For $100 after a $50 coupon, yes, this Govi is worth it. The work from home movement has pushed a lot of people to work outside the traditional office environment. For many, this means a shift to laptops to bring home or take wherever you want to work. Tools like the KYY portable monitor have become more popular, helping less traditional workers stay productive on the go. The monitor comes with a very high quality case, which also acts as a stand. I definitely needed to check out the instructions the first time I folded the cover into the stand. But once it was set up, I found it to be relatively stable, if not perfect. The build quality on the screen and the buttons are what you would expect for $100. I tested the monitor with my laptop and it was easy to set up as an extended screen, essentially doubling my screen real estate next to my 15 inch monitor. The 1080 picture looked crisp, but I wouldn't depend on this monitor for any kind of color or photo work. The menus work similar to any monitor with adjustable brightness and color. It's also possible to connect this monitor to a phone or tablet, but you will only be able to mirror your device screen and not extend it. One complaint I have with the monitor is that the uneven large bezel on the bottom makes this device look very 2010, not 2022 when it was released. I also wish they could have avoided using the silver edge around the screen, which only manages to frame the bezel and bring attention to it. If you're working on the go and want a monitor to throw in your backpack, these issues wouldn't stop me from buying the KYY. My next setup product is the Vadir Monitor Stand. This is a setup accessory that can help you out in several different ways. The Amazon listing labels this as a monitor stand first and a shelf second. But my recommendation would be to pair this with a monitor arm and use it as a desk shelf and dock only. There's lots of different advantages to using a desk shelf. Hiding your laptop or other accessories under the shelf can help give you that minimalist look. The stand comes with a power cord that connects underneath the shelf, delivering power via USB-C to your laptop. When I connected my 15-inch Dell XPS laptop, I didn't get any warnings for insufficient power supply. This is something I commonly see when using other docks. Aside from powering the laptop, the dock gives you four USB 3.0 ports. These are great for hard drives, USB receivers, or anything you want to power. The wireless charger on top works great, and I appreciated the texture design to designate its location. It gives your phone a softer landing pad. Now, if you're familiar with our channel, you'll know that I'm the cable management nerd. And I do mean the second definition here, not the first. So I'm not real excited about how the cables all stick off the side of the shelf with no way to manage them. Also, the inputs feel quite dated. I would prefer Ethernet, Display, or USB-C inputs. Before buying, just plan out if these ports will work for you. 